this insight of there being no self, which you've had before, I know, and to various degrees, but this I feel like that's what, end to it. Yeah, I feel like Asilomar was a good part of that wiped out, mm -hmm. but this was different. Um, It was really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which is which is paradoxical to have such a personal sense of it. Um, it doesn't make any sense at all, but it's there. It's it's what's real. Um, so it, it um, you can't deny it. Well, when you say it was hard, what made it hard? Or or maybe even what was surprising about it? I think what was the most surprising about it is that orientation, not having something to rely on. It reminds me of when Adya Shanti says, there's nowhere left to rest your head. Mm -hmm. And I felt that a few times, but this is really like, there's no way to orient to life anymore. And I think that's sort of shocking, at least you could say to the, um, the system. Right, mm -hmm. e even. Um, that's that's a really good way of where, putting it. Yeah, where it just it's like I, the uh, framework of how I would orient to life, even if it was still even if it was there subtly before, it was still a framework of how to orient to life, moment to moment, even even if it's more presence or through teaching or whatever it is, it's still a way to orient to life that there's something relying on. Like it's like literally like feels like a teeter or something, like you're leaning on something. Mm -hmm. And that's creating a sense of dualistic expression in, in, to some extent still when there's some orientation to life. Mm -hmm. And what feels like happened was the obliteration of that. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's the right word, obliteration. Obliteration, Obli yeah. Obliterate, oblib Ob obliteration. <laughs> obliteration. Yeah. Um, the obliteration of that structure where, um, it was okay in retreat um, as because we were in retreat, so it was just orienting to meditation, really. There wasn't much to necessarily orient to, though I don't know how detailed you want me to go into that experience. Um, no, I, I just wanted to like kind of highlight that. I remember you like yeah. one night definitely crying a lot, like more yeah. than I had ever seen you cry, actually. And at the same time, it was you were like a staring out into the rain and just like, loving the rain too. I remember that yeah. very clearly as well. It was like being being like radically stripped away from something that even subtly something was so glued to and attached to. Yeah. Um, or not even attached, but more like grasped onto. It's mm -hmm. like almost like two particles that are so in, in, intertwined together. They were believed like there was a belief that was like, oh, well, this is one, yeah. but like this isn't one. Yeah. There's two things that are glued together still. Yeah. And they sort of needed to be radically stripped away from mm -hmm. each other, which was painful mm -hmm. physically and mentally and emotionally in so many ways. It was just painful because I could just feel that visceral like, oh my God, I'm being completely like obliterate, like I'm dying completely. I don't mm -hmm. know how to explain it. I, and I think I, that's a good explanation. And, and it was like, the end of the end, like the end, the beginning of the end had already started, but it was like the end of the end kind of thing where it was like, oh my God. And it was so nuanced and um, specific. And it was just seeing in that, like the flash of, of, of the whole life and not even just Violet's life, but, but all of life in the way that we, we orient to life, the way that we move through these coping mechanisms of, um, what we think is better or worse, or what we think is the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, or what gives us security or what gives us love, or, you know, and, and I, I think to some extent this stuff is talked about and you lose the sense of this in First Awakening and surely in other stages, but it's like in this sort of finality of it all, it's, it's really like there's nothing to orient to, there's nothing to hide in and yeah. create a self in and create any distance. It's not even creating a self, but cause, cause a lot of this last year didn't feel like I was, it was creating a self. It was just like some like 
background structure or something that was sort of holding mechanisms together or behavior patterns together. And that whole thing just like crumbled. So in that I could see just the tragedy of how the self, the whole mechanism of self is a grasp, is a hold onto this, a hold onto this, hold onto this. And it's like, just open your hand and let the sand slip through your fingers mm -hmm. and everything's okay. And it was beautiful because I went to bed crying and feeling this tragedy and this like, oh my God, like horror of like, I just died right now. And um, it wasn't even that I died. It was like a structure of, it it's wasn't. Like everything dies. Yeah, everything it was dies. everything dies. The whole yeah. world dies. Everything you ever thought, your hopes, dreams, any place you feel like you can go back to, to to settle yourself, yeah. to regroup, like it's just gone. You realize it was all an illusion, including the spiritual journey. Yeah, exactly. And that that, that can was be hard to like that was the hardest thing was that like, oh my God, I was like, oh my God, my whole five years of like, this was the most important five years of my life. I still sort of had some bit of narrative there, right? Like this whole five years of my life, it, and it is the most important, these five years was the most important part of my life for the for that storyline, mm -hmm. right? But, but nothing beyond that. Mm -hmm. And when there's a grasping of that storyline, even though you see that it's not anyone's story, there's still a grasping of that in and of itself. Um, it, yeah, it was like everything, everything was not the way that, uh, that I thought it was. And it, it reminded me of like, uh, there was a story of a girl at Adi Ashanti's retreat or a woman at Adi Ashanti's retreat that was like, wanted she told everybody on the microphone to leave like so it was it, it, when she ran up on the stage grabbed the mic and said everyone leave leave you don't want to go or he's pointing you yeah and that's what I was like oh like I, I you know it's like it's funny because I think I understand this a little bit more and more and I sure I did over the years but until it happens fully fully mm -hmm. do I really understand it like this is not what this is not what I came for mm -hmm. and in some ways I did come for this mm -hmm. But it was, it was just rad it's just really radical and hard mm -hmm. to talk about. Um, yeah. And then I, I, I don't know if you find it useful or not, but I was going to share a little bit about getting back home. and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I just yeah. want to say a little bit about this. Because sure. Adi Shanti is one of the very few people I hear talk about this very directly. Yeah. And even he said when he first started talking about it, he stopped for many years because people were found it so it's distressing. It's scary. Yeah. It's so scary. And it should be, and it kind of has to be. Uh, and he's also said it's not wantable. Yeah. And it's not wantable, but I want to mm -hmm. point out that it is natural. It's completely natural. It's, yeah. And for the, one, for the person that thought they were to go through this, when, when death is pointing you right in the face, there's no way to that not to be terrifying. Yeah. I mean, absolute death. Absolute death. So, um, of, but... Of in, everything, the whole universe, the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even even the perception that there could be a world, all of it. But it's not that yeah. something died. It's no. to see that all of that was one thought. That's what I'm pointing at. All of it was one thought. And it's, that's what's fucking totally bozo natural. about it. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, and so when you were like, you, I could feel, I've never felt, I felt you suffer in various oh ways, but I've never felt that kind of despair from you and laying next to you. I wasn't trying to fix it. I was just feeling it with you. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, I know this. And, but at the same time, I was kind of pointing out to you like, and yet it's just one thought bubble popping right now. Like, it's crazy that yeah. and this is just naturalness, but this naturalness has no underlying truth, reality, way of being. It's crazy. It's, mm -hmm. this is, this gets, the paradox gets so paradoxical that it kind yeah. of swallows itself. Yes. And you walk out, something walks out of the other side of it. And I don't know what it is, but it's a very real death. Yeah, I heard Frank Yang say something recently of like in that stage, like the snake consumes its tail mm -hmm. like it can't reach its tail the whole rest mm -hmm. of the time or it takes a chunk out of it but it like yeah. something like that yeah and I was like oh that's really interesting it just blips out yeah and then you and then not you but whatever whatever this is somehow sees sees things accurately but but that doesn't mean there's a special way of seeing it doesn't mean that there's a structure to reality